season has been uh, uh, quite good. Uh, talk a little bit about where, obviously, we're about to get into you having a new captain. Right. Talk a little bit about the relationship that you have with uh, Michael Chitlis, his role, and sure. how what's going to happen. Uh, so, yeah, like you said, um, Michael Chitlis comes on to play the new captain at the GCPD, uh, Captain Barnes. And um, just went the cloud in. don't trust the word he said. Exactly. <laughs> um, and Chitlis is a law and order kind of guy. Barnes comes in to... to um, sort of breathe uh, new life into a GCPD that is, you know, as you can tell, kind of about to fall apart at the seams. They've been attacked and attacked inside their own house, um, which creates a new dynamic for Jim because he's actually not used to having a, um, <laughs> an impressive boss and a boss that sort of uh, uh, is not only law and order, but law and order to the point of... Um, uh, uh, militarism uh, and so they form a bond but it's a bond that has potentially explosive elements in it um, Jim is learning that to get things done in Gotham you can't play by the rules Barnes only wants to play by the rules so uh, down the line that may, that may create uh, tension Ben, uh, one of my favorite scenes so far this season was right after the massacre in the police station when Alfred and Bruce come to see you and Bruce gives you that big hug Right. And I just thought it says so much about who these characters are, what they mean to each other, and what they're going to mean to each other in the future. Could you talk about the importance of that moment and, and working on that together? Sure. Um, you know, over the past so sort of second half of the first season and, and the beginning of this season, we've seen uh, Bruce and Jim grow apart. Uh, uh, Jim has effectively lost Bruce's trust by not solving his parents' crime and, and by effectively kind of having to deal with his own um, issues on the job and elsewhere. And so um, Bruce is very distrustful of Jim. Um, but you realize in that moment how, how, um, how close they are on a, sort of a very deep uh, sort of emotional level. And, um, and when we shot it, uh, it was really just to be, to be sort of figuring out how he, how he felt about me in that moment. And, and nice about him was you just saw the pure joy of a, of a young man sort of seeing someone, thinking that this person close to him could, have, could be dead and realizing he's alive and just sort of, oh, fuck it, I'm going to wake up to you and give you a nice big hug. It's quite sweet. Um, their relationship will continue to evolve, and um, but they do have, it's nice to remind the audience that at its core, there's a, there's a real friendship there. Yeah. I also loved uh, Alfred hitting on your girlfriend last yes. week. That's very, very <laughs> hilarious. Yes. Yes. Very well, that, makes, that makes one of us. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was quite funny to watch. I was you know, sitting there watching uh, Sean and uh, Marina do that. It was quite yeah. funny. Very, very well written scene. And uh, it's always nice to see a different side of Alfred, not the, not just the patrician, but also the, uh, the man. With blood coursing through Yes, he is. Right. <laughs> blood. Too much. Too much. Yes, <laughs> yes. Does the character still surprise you? Because I think us. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, he does. This season in particular. I mean, what's nice about having this new energy injected into the show with the likes of James and, and uh, his cohort is, uh, is, is all of a sudden Gordon is tested in a way that he really wasn't tested last year. We're serializing the whole thing. So we have, uh, we've got some pretty great stuff coming up where at the moment Theo appears to be um, the savior of the city, but the audience is, is aware because they're seeing things behind the scenes that this is not case. Jim does not know that yet, so he is going to have to figure it out for himself. That just allows us as actors to uh, have a lot of fun. Right. It's so well written, you know, it's, it's very well designed. Somehow they keep all the storylines balanced, and there's an enormous number of characters, um, and yet they weave this bigger arc, which is which we're finding about every time we get a new episode, we do a read through, and we're like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> And yeah, there's a lot of great reveals ahead. It's hard to talk about. This is it's very exciting. Last question, ben, guys. How did you approach to the character in this, uh, this year that well, the show has the success that has, that it's a different uh, new season, you know? It's different from the, the past one. I think one of the things that we all tried to do, uh, uh, Bruno Heller, uh, Danny Cannon, myself, John Stevens, um, we wanted to have very honest conversations about what worked in the first season and what didn't, what could have worked better. And, and that went all the way down the line and certainly uh, uh, 
included me. Uh, and I think one of the things we realized was that to have Jim be the pure moral force, always right, always correct, always sort of upstanding, was effectively boring after a certain point, and, and not realistic. I mean, if, if he's supposed to gain power in Gotham and, and, and rise up the ranks, he's going to have to learn how to, how, to, how to bend the rules and break them. And so we wanted to unleash him, and, and, and we wanted to bring that out of him by, by putting pure evil um, up against him. Well, like, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and play, it's just, like, it's just play, what I do. It's what you do. Thanks, everybody. Um, Can so I get that's one of you guys? Yeah. Here he goes, frozen <laughs> smile. <laughs> Like, as if. As if. Right. The villains <laughs> of Gotham. <laughs> uh, talk a little bit about uh, there's a, a, a changing dynamic with the new captain coming through, their villains running amok. Talk a little bit about where we're at in the show and where it's going. Uh, yeah, it's, well, I... I <laughs> Tell us, King of Gotham. <laughs> <laughs> well, Oswald's the King of Gotham at the moment. Uh, we'll see how long that lasts. But, uh, but yeah, it's, um, it's a whole new... Uh, it, the season's called Rise of the Villains, and so therefore, the interaction between villains is going to be brought to the forefront in this season. I, whereas last year, you know, it, like with Corey's character, he, you know, it, it, he wasn't fully. He still is going through the process of reconciling, you know, himself with his dark, with the, the darker side of himself, and uh, and then and Oswald was doing his own thing, and it was very much about like organized crime and that sort of aspect. Now we're in this in this world where you know we see characters like Jerome and the Maniacs coming up. We see Theo Gallivan. All these you know mega villains are coming together. So the interaction and the way that that everyone's sort of lives start you know coming together and colliding is really brought to the forefront this season. Yeah, yeah the uh, you know the two side the two mobs the the, the very thing that was our two. Gotham's two-party system uh, was was keeping everything under control, basically, and that's that's gone now. So it's anarchy, and it's really anybody's game. So you're going to see people using whatever tactics necessary to to, to get power. Uh, and so we have really exciting people coming in: Theo Gallivan, Tabitha, his sister Tabitha. Uh, these are people who, especially in the next few episodes, are going to understand their game plan. Why, uh, why they're doing what they're doing, why they organized the maniacs and then uh, made them defunct. Um, you know, they, they're ruthless, ruthless people. Um, Not to forget Barbara Keen, who is now crazy. Crazy. <laughs> she, she's dubbed herself Stabby Babs. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you guys as actors about sort of the joy of having this experience where not only you're playing iconic, beloved characters, but they're extremely well written, complex, and you have these amazing arcs to, you know, work on throughout the first season now going into second. Can you talk about just this experience of, as actors, having these roles to play? We're very fortunate. Um, and we're also very fortunate that the writers and the producers are involving us in the evolution and talking to us, uh, explaining their ideas and asking for input. Um, the thing that I've been so satisfied with personally, um, I, I was very impatient last year, you know, laying the groundwork for Edward. And for him, in this world that's been so, like, exciting and eventful and action-packed and, like, with all these, like, seething characters, you know, uh, Ed... Edward is like well intentioned and a he's good guy. I'm like, come on! <laughs> I'm, I like he's killing people and I'm picking out onions. Yeah. I'm like floored. I'm just I'm just trying to get a date. Yeah. Like this is so late. No, but it, I'm so happy that like that was laid out uh, that way because now you know that's that's essentially it's this exciting pinball game and I've just spent like an entire year just like slowly pulling this back and very soon I get to like let go in a cool way. Um, so we're, we're we're still setting some stuff up. It's 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 amazing. This year for me has been has been really fun. In, in the next few episodes, with this alter ego uh, that has made himself um, very uh, noticeable, he, uh, I just have been I've been able to like get more aggressive and 
almost feral. <laughs> it's really good. It's been really fun. It's, it's really satisfying. Fun. And yeah, just to touch off what he said, like Bruno Heller gives us this amazing gift where, again, like he, it's Bruno Heller, like comes to us personally and he's like, you know, this is a community. We're creating this together. It's not just one person's vision, it's all of us. And like early, very early on he said, you know, there's gonna come a point where you guys are gonna know these characters better than we do. So please, like, talk to us. Like, if anything doesn't ring true. And like you said, I mean, they're iconic villains, and the, the fact that we can bring some of our own personal ideas and interpretations to it, so it's an absolute dream. Like, you know, there's not enough words to describe how amazing it is. You described it well. Can you give a shout to you guys? Why are not I hashtag it right now? I, I wanted to ask you if what we see Barbara going through, certainly in the beginning of this season, is there a little bit of a precursor to Harley Quinn you're kind of putting in there? I mean, the character, you certainly, I'm That's sure, have heard that on the buzz. That yes, buzz. I've heard a lot of that, yeah. Um, I mean, right now she is just kind of living out her own kind of personal dark fantasies, I guess you would say. With Jim, she has a real agenda. You know, she wants to bring Jim into her dark place. And if you asked her, she would say that she's not crazy. You know, so and I think Harley Quinn probably would go, "Yeah, I'm crazy." <laughs> so I think if if she is, and I have no idea, no, we don't know if she is to become that. Then she's got a, a long way to go because she has to really lose more of herself. I think in order to become that element that Harley Quinn. Do you know about all the art that the character uh, is going to have in the first season and um, how much do you know about this second season? Yeah, I mean, I... Head in, this is a common question. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I did know that she was going to like a darker place because there were lots of elements that kind of came out in the first season. Like, she was drinking a lot, she was essentially taking drugs, you know, smoking weed. Um, and I think that there were bits to her that were really dark that she wasn't showing to, to Jim and I knew that she was going there I didn't know that she was actually going to kill her parents um, until obviously I was told so that was a, a wonderful I think twist for her because that really set her on this new course where you can't really come back from that you know there's no room there may be redemption somewhere way in the future but right now that's like you've done something really 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 terrible so yeah we'll talk a little bit about uh, uh Michael Chitlis is joining the show, yes. new captain. Yeah. There's uh, a lot of villains running around. It seems like it's a lot of activity. What can you tease people in terms of where, what's coming up uh, for, say, tomorrow night and for the future? Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is an introduction of, of Captain Barnes. I think yeah. that's sort of the... Also, uh, I think uh, Theo and Tabitha strike up a new relationship with Penguin tomorrow night. So that's where we're going. Well, I guess going in a different light, uh, this is an 11-episode arc for Rise of the Villains. How much were you guys told at the beginning this is the entire arc, and how much are you guys looking at it as individual scripts? Like, I just want to know what's coming right now. I know nothing. I mean, maybe you know more than I do, but uh, I, each script is a come is a surprise. Um, and I think I prefer it that way. You don't get too far ahead of yourself. Yeah, because you never know in life. You know, yeah. someone's not like, by the way, here's the script for your next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you don't know what's coming. So it's something to nice to not know. Yeah. What but can you we talk do know about? some things, but we're just not like right. I was just going to ask you about the sort of relationship between your two characters. We saw that's very interesting where that could be going. We saw some of that last week's episode. Can you talk a little bit about where that's going to go in the future? Yeah. Do you want to take that, darling? You take that one, darling. <laughs> Um, it's going to continue to play out. Um, she, I don't, Barbara and, or, or, and Tabitha and Theo, it's a very twisted, complicated love triangle. Mm -hmm. I think Theo and, and Tabitha are using her as sort of a toy to make each other jealous and, mm -hmm. and draw that out. And then I think she's also just interested in Barbara because she's female energy in the house and she's like a baby that doesn't quite know what she's doing yet. 
Can you talk about your character's uh, relationship to Theo? Because that's super interesting and complex. Yeah, it's uh, it's like any sibling relationship, I, I think, but but obviously a, a much crazier and more intense. <laughs> but we talk about it a lot. I think um, there's a lot of loyalty and love there, but there's a lot of underlying resentment and anger. Um, and I think I'm not sure that Tabitha is on board for his plan. He's the brains or the, the master manipulator and schemer, and she's the brawl. Or, yeah, and, and I think that she necessarily doesn't want to be told what to do so much, so we'll see her break away from that at some point. I, I think from Tabitha's point of view, one second, I think from, Tab uh, from Barbara's point of view, sorry, it's like she sees those two elements in them and she can play those things for what they're kind of useful for. Mm. I was just curious, real fast, Jerome gets knocked off uh, last week. How does that sort of play into Barbara's mentality for the future, where maybe she didn't know that was going to happen? Yeah, I think that was an interesting moment for her, because she does feel like she is, she needs the Galavans right now, you know, because she, she doesn't have the resources that she, she would like to have in order to, to, to complete her mission at the moment. So she has to use them, and I think she was sort of quite confident that she had both of them under control, because she's sort of playing them against each other and whatever. But then when that happened, she was like, oh, okay, so he's a little bit, he's a little bit of a loose cannon, this Galavan, you know, and I have to be very careful. 